Hey everyone, Mark here um, in Italy, in Florence, world famous city. Totally recommend it if you have time. I understand they've got a lot of tourists coming, so be, be you know, t hurry up uh, to come here. Um, beautiful things to see. But one of the other beautiful things to see that people don't necessarily think about is this company, Dorin. Okay, um, CO2 compressor manufacturer. They, they, they manufacture compressors and have done for well over 100 years. Right? More, 160. 106. 106. 106 years. So a family business. Um, and, and they're obviously a, a, a global leader in CO2, which is why I'm here. Um, and we're going to get to see a little bit uh, the, the manufacturing process, the different steps from where you get the housing and other components to assembling and then testing and so forth. So, not uh, only that. And not only also that. Also some yeah. good uh, babies. Yeah. So what, watch, watch until the end of the video because then you'll see a nice big baby at the end. Hint, hint. That, that was shown at a very famous trade show just a few weeks ago. But who is this guy? So Giovanni Dorin, he's well known to us all. Um, one of the family members running Absolutely. the business, running the business, taking care of all the marketing and business development and, 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 and obviously helping grow the business globally. Then we have Frederica here who recently joined the team as man marketing manager. Hi. Um, and then obviously I like to call him Mr. CO2 compressor. Giacomo, I, I will actually show the video of him that I did of him. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, he doesn't want don't. it, but I will. Um, of We're like 15 years ago when we first did my first ever YouTube video was with him, actually in <laughs> Chicago, right? That's right. And he's still looking as young as ever yeah. and still in love with CO2. So that's a good sign. Uh, yeah, this, so this is actually the proof that our compressors work well. Yeah, <laughs> they keep fresh yeah. and they keep us very young. Yeah, and he's time. still doing it, and they're still doing it. So that's that's that, that's the Italian passion that we all love and respect, and you've got it here in Dorin. So really looking forward to this tour. Thank you. Thank and you, remember, everybody. Remember, we are born to freeze. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so now we're at the very, very beginning of assembling CO uh, compressors, and in this particular case, CO2 compressors. So tell us a little bit about what we're seeing. Absolutely. Uh, we're, we are actually in the uh, production stock. Here we are stocking the main components needed to build the compressor. Yep. Everything you see here is turning into about three weeks' time. Okay. And uh, what you see here is uh, crankcases ready uh, to flow into our workshop. These are all for CO2 compressors, so you can see that uh, the CO2 numbers are definitely increasing. Yeah, and these are specifically, these are housings, right, for the compressors? Yeah, that's the body, that's yeah, the, the body. case of the compressor. Yeah, and they uh, come from different, part, different suppliers, correct? All over Europe, all primarily over. from Italy and Germany. Okay, okay. So, tell us a little bit what we're seeing here. We've got different lines here. Yes, absolutely. Uh, what you see here is our semi-automated production line. Basically, compressors here are sent to the various assembly postations. Okay. And actually, you can see how strong is CO2 in our business because uh, line 4 and line 5 are only CO2 compressors. So these are the lines here that I'm pointing at right now. Correct. Yeah? So you get a sense of all the different lines before they're sent off to individual uh, stations to be assembled, exactly, right? Exactly, exactly. Okay, which is the next step. So, Giacomo, just tell us a little bit what we're seeing here in the background here. Who's this guy and what's he doing? Yeah, Please. hi. So, uh, this guy is assembling one of our CO2 compressors. This is uh, becoming very strong in the automotive sector for reversible uh, heat pump, so doing air conditioning and heating for a very famous player. Um, that you Germany. can't mention right now, but we'll let people guess. Yes. Uh, so basically, the operator is building the compressor from zero to 100%. This is really a handcrafted product. And after he has been uh, assembling the compressor, uh, the compressor will go automatically uh, into our testing equipment. Uh, which consists of a leak test machine and a run test machine. Okay, so but just these specific compressors that we're seeing here, how long is it taking him to make one? This specific... On a normal average, you know, when you're not in an emergency, when you're not having to build one very quickly. <laughs> Jeff, typically speaking, how long does it take one guy to build one compressor? For the guy to assemble the compressor, this specific kind, 
is about 40 minutes. 40 minutes per yeah. compressor? In assembly, yes. In assembly, before yeah. you get it all tested and everything, Correct. right? Okay. You, is there anything you want to show specifically here that he's doing or? Well, he is assembling the compressor completely. So he is now proceeding toward uh, assembling the compressor heads and discharge manifold. Uh, yeah, and uh, ensuring the compressor is a uh, very high quality product, which is kind of our... And, and, and why, why, why have you decided as a manufacturer to have each individual operator responsible from zero to 100% the assembly? Why, why is that? What is the reason for that? This is helping traceability a lot okay. because uh, we can correct flows very, very easily. Uh, and definitely is also proud for the operator uh, to be contributing to the production because he has been assembling really a specific and unique piece of equipment. Okay, okay, okay. So he signs off every single, well, every single compressor? Not literally, but no, 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 uh, no, no, no. with uh, beamers and barcodes, okay. we managed to trace back who has been assembling the compressor, okay. yes. Okay, all right. So let me just zoom in in here. Can I, am I allowed to do that? Yep. So, beautiful object. Forty minutes to assemble all the pieces. How for, many pieces are we talking side, about? About two hundred. Two hundred pieces. Yeah. Wow. So. What, are we, what is this big blue box that we're seeing behind us here? Basically, what you see here is our uh, leak test machine. Okay. This is a fully automated machine testing with helium. Why so, helium? Uh, helium is a very fine particle, so it is easier to detect any so leakage. You can see really every single possible leak. Correct. Potentially. Be with helium, you see it much better. Much better and much quicker. Much quicker, okay. So we are able to grant a maximum leakage of three grams per year. Three grams a, per year? From every compressor, okay. yes. Okay. And this machine is testing every compressor uh, at 165 bar on the high pressure side and 110 bar on the low pressure side in a two, 2.5 minutes uh, time compressor. testing. Yeah. And, and these are all here, the ones I'm pointing out here, these are all the next ones in line, the CO2 compressors. To be tested. To yep. be tested. Okay. Maybe we can have a look yep. on how the machine works. Next compressor to be tested. It will go into this chamber with quick connection. The compressor will be pressure tested uh, with helium okay. up to 165 bar on the discharge pressure side and up to 110 bar on the crankcase. And you will see how the test works. It's going to beam on the barcode of the production paper. Yeah. And uh, the system is registering that this specific compressor is going to be leak tested now. Okay. And this particular one you were saying is going to go to China, right? Yes, sir. Absolutely. Yeah. Also in China, we see a lot of momentum on CO2 application, especially on heat pumps. Yeah. But also uh, industrial commercial refrigeration are picking up. Okay. So basically, compressor is going into this chamber. Yep. The chamber will be closed. Yep. Vacuum will be made outside the compressor and high pressure helium mixture with dry air will be uh, pushed into the compressor housings. Okay. And we'll be able to track that here on the monitor, right? You can check can on we, the monitor. Can we check on yep. the monitor? So what are we looking at? The pressure is going up at one point. These are the pressure being measured. Okay. First of all, we do the vacuum okay. outside the compressor, which okay. is in millibar. Yeah. This is actually below millibar of several order of magnitudes. Because if the compressor is able to keep a vacuum, is already an indication that it's not going to leak. Okay. 
So th this is another part of the production process that's quite unique, right? I understand from a, from a compressor manufacturing point of view. Exactly. Uh, this is where we are running our final uh, production process control. Mm -hmm. Basically, every single CO2 compressor is running for 25, 30 minutes in a run-in test. Every compressor is running 25 bar suction pressure, 80 bar discharge pressure in a real CO2 loop for about 25, 30 minutes so that we have absolutely no chance of having a dead on arrival. This is quite unique in our production and uh, with such amount of records we are able to um, qualify that our compressors are performing very well in the field since from the very first day of operation. Okay, and, uh, and, and you are now building out a new area where you're going to have new machines, new teams that are going to be yeah. able to speed that process up because that, that takes time, right, if you do that for every single compressor that you make. Absolutely. Which I'll, uh, show, I'll show in the video here. Absolutely. Uh, this kind of test is very nice because it gives you a very strong uh, quality mm. uh, level for, the, for our customers. However, it's clearly a bottleneck yeah. from a production standpoint. So this but, is to give uh, people an idea. This is what we're talking about here. The compressors are going here. You've got yep. two stations. The one on the right is not operating right now, but this one is. Yeah, you can come and have a okay, look. Okay, okay. The compressor is running inside this box. In this? Yeah. Ah, this. Okay. No sound. It's very silent compressor. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what you see here is the operating condition of the compressor doing its uh, run-in test. Okay. Uh, this is suction pressure, 25 bar. Discharge pressure, 80 bar. And we are measuring compressor mass flow and power and current consumption. So every compressor is running 25, 30 minutes in a real CO2 transcritical loop. This is quite unique in our production setup and uh, definitely gives our customer the assurance that there is no dead on the road. So th this area within the manufacturing facility is focused on which application mostly? This is for industrial refrigeration and industrial heat pumps okay. for large compressor sizes. What you see here is a large 160 horsepower transcritical compressor being assembled. That's a six cylinder one, right? Yes. Not the big baby that you announced at Chilventa. Not, not that one. Not yet, not yet. Okay, and then this will become dedicated basically for CO2, right? This area you see here yeah. now is working progress, yeah. but basically it will be focusing on industrial compressors from 160 horse up. Basically what you see here is our fully robotized painting process system. Uh, we are in a mechanical environment. We are building uh, reciprocating uh, compressors. So you may have oil traces on the compressor body, like you can see here. So clearly here, the paint will not stick well. So the very first process is a phospho degreasing of the outer surfaces. Okay. We cannot see it because it's a chemical aggressive environment, but you can see how it looks like afterward. Okay. So the body is completely clean, degreased, and the surface is now ready to get the paint yep. on. So what you see here is our first robot that will provide a layer of primer, anti-rust, This is fully automated and robotized. Wow. <laughs> so these robots are anthropomorph because they are instructed by an operator manually okay. and they are able to reproduce all the movement five times quicker than a human being. This is the very end of our production line where compressors are painted with our typical dark blue color. But what is very important is to say 
that this painting process is approved and certified for being capable to resist to 1,000 hours or salt spray environment. So in a very aggressive environment, this paint will still be effectively so in now, place. So now we're in a special secret room, right? Downstairs, uh, where you do some testing, right? For the US market, right? That's right. This is our UL lab. We are fully accredited by UL. Okay. So our lab has been inspected, verified, audited, and qualified by UL representatives. Okay. And we are now able to uh, run all the UL listing uh, on our own. And what you see here is actually a large 160 horsepower compressor doing the locked rotor testing. Uh, which consists of blocking the piston physically to let the compressor run and to check that the compressor is not overheating so that the uh, thermal protection are working properly. This is a very challenging, challenging test. There is no compressor in operation. Clearly, the pistons are, are locked. But uh, still, this is quite interesting because uh, compressor is pulling like 1,200 amps. No, it's, it's not pulling now but normally is pulling 1,200 amps uh, when it starts. So this is part of our effort in being capable to work with the US and North American market. And, and, and here we see the big baby, the eight cylinder one that you were showcasing at Chilventa, right? Exactly. This is our biggest animal, I would say. Mm. Uh, this is a compressor featuring up to 900 horsepower and 360 cubic meter per hour CO2 transcritical design. Mm -hmm. This is with its uh, semi-hermetic design, and uh, this is where we are going in the next uh, one and a half year, two years. For the time being, we are qualifying the drive gear with another compressor design, which is just uh, behind this one. The real compressor that we have actually in operation, uh, this is with a open drive design, so there is an electric motor coupled to the drive gear, and uh, this is what we are actually testing to qualify the drive gear reliability and effectiveness. And, and this is to do what though? This is well, specifically to... You know, we are a compressor manufacturing company, mm. but uh, we still have a look into the balance sheet at the end of the year. Yeah. This big animal is basically costing us uh, 500 euro per day of testing. Okay. So we want to make something out of it. Yep. This is why um, we have been designing a chiller heat pump behind that okay. uh, that is going to provide the uh, complete energy um, duty for the entire uh, facility during winter and summer. So it will provide comfort, heating and cooling for the people working in the workshop. But this, was also, this will also be needed for the oven, for instance, at the painting, uh, in the painting process and for many other utilities, wherever we will so need. So heating and cooling, yes. the whole facility, including the people working in the office, one compressor, yeah. one CO2 yeah. compressor. You know, re reliability is our... Yeah, so you've got to make sure this thing never breaks down, right? We it's need going to, to do be, that. This is, the, test, this is yes. the testing that you're going to be doing. Okay. Correct. Okay, good luck with that. Thank you.